Sharks are among the most perfectly constructed creatures in nature. Some forms have survived for 200 million years. Eugenie Clark Now sharks are one of nature's finest specimens indeed, a creature of elegance and ferocity, power and beauty. With skeletons made from cartilage, which is silky and durable, a form of connective tissue versus the hard, inelastic bones that make up the vast majority of other vertebrates. Sharks alongside their cousins, stingrays, manta rays, and sawfish would roam various aquatic ecosystems with their cartilaginous bodies. Oftentimes, and still to this day, they make up the top of the food chain. They reign over bony fish, invertebrates, aquatic mammals, birds, and reptiles that populate these watery worlds. For the past 450 million years, these incredible marine beasts have dominated the world's oceans. They've survived predators, climate change, and apocalypses. Now, obviously, individual sharks have not survived that long, nor have any sp specific species of sharks. But this group of streamlined fish with cartilaginous so-called skeletons came into Earth's biological drama before the dinosaurs and has long outlasted them. All the way to our current point of the plot, when a bipedal African ape started to dominate the planet, wherever there was soil to step on. That bipedal ape would intrude upon the aquatic scapes of the sharks, sometimes looking to prey upon the predators, sometimes becoming prey themselves, and sometimes to marvel in fascination at the sharks. Sharks played a pivotal role in nearly every maritime culture which sailed along the waters shark roamed in. If the sharks are the greatest maritime hunters, then the Polynesians were the greatest maritime sailors. The Polynesians were the first to colonize Hawaii, New Zealand, and Easter Island, and a variety of other islands across the Pacific. And these people knew the sea, and they knew that it was wise to worship the shark gods, as they told tales of supernatural beings who could shapeshift between human and shark, something Jesus might not be able to do. Similar tales of great power inspired by the shark arose in various other island cultures. To these various cultures, sharks played a role similar to lions, tigers, eagles, and other apex predators, worthy of both fear and respect in those terrestrial realms. Sharks, of course, are not a monolith, though. Some, like the dogfish, can fit in the palm of your hand. Others, like the whale shark, are the largest fish on the planet, ranging over 10 meters or 30 feet. Most prefer warm water, but there is a Greenland shark that can swim across frigid waters of the subarctic and can live for hundreds of years in very, very cold water. Not all reside in salt water. The bull shark sometimes swims up brackish water and even fresh water, and even some river sharks exist as rare as they are. Heck, not even all sharks are carnivorous. The bonnethead shark also eats plants. And of course, to debunk the worst stereotype of all, most sharks aren't man-eaters. Like nearly all stereotypes, there is some element of truth to the man-eater. Great whites, tiger sharks, bull sharks, hammerheads, and to a lesser extent, other oceanic sharks like the oceanic white tip shark, oftentimes, well, maybe not oftentimes, but on some occasions, will attack humans. However, with over 500 species of sharks, the likelihood of one of them trying to eat you is just really small. And I'm saying this as someone who has died with them multiple times. Shark attacks, by and large, are a rare phenomenon. Not a non-existent one, but a very rare one. Most shark attacks are found in countries with aforementioned large aggressive species and large beach cultures with surfing, such as the nation of Australia or South Africa, Brazil, and the U.S. state of Hawaii. You are more likely to be killed by a dog. And sure, this is partially because people on land are most likely to interact with dogs, but at the end of the day, even with frequent contact with sharks, the threat of this animal attacking you is really, really unlikely for the vast majority of species. Part of the reason for this bleak reputation were a few shark attacks on Jersey Shore during the early 20th century, in which a grand total of four people were killed. This was during the year 1916. I personally wish it was done in the year 2010. So, at least some of the victims would have been members of Jersey Shore. Yes, old reference indeed. Nonetheless, these attacks fueled fear and resentment towards sharks. Another factor has been pop culture. Movies like Deep Blue Sea is a notable one, along with most famously Jaws. A great movie, 
but not the best for marine conservation, and the sequels were complete garbage. These movies contribute to the image of sharks as ruthless man-eaters. To be fair though, both the author of the novel and Steven Spielberg have denied that this was their intention. The author of the Jaws novel, Peter Benchley, in fact, was a devout marine conservationist. More recent examples of negative depictions of sharks would be ones like Finding Nemo with this character Bruce, who tries at best to abstain from eating fish, but by and large still tries to eat the fish. By the way, great white sharks most notably do not eat fish for the most part. They tend to prefer marine birds and marine mammals. Their attacks on humans probably stem from mistaking humans in diving suits for sea lions. Granted, some of the positive depictions of sharks as biological masterpieces have also produced some forms of BS as well, namely the idea that sharks don't get cancer. Sharks do in fact get cancer. And there are also other myths, such as eating sharks, namely shark fin soup, reduces cancer, which is complete BS. While less than 100 people are killed by sharks each year, tens of millions of sharks are killed by humans annually. By and large, this is relegated to Asia. Other nations in the Indo-Pacific eat them as well, such as the Western nation of Australia, where shark meat is sometimes used for fish and chips in cities like Adelaide. In the Indian subcontinent, the cartilaginous bones are oftentimes used in Southern Indian and Sri Lankan cooking. The nation of Iceland has fermented Greenland shark, which reeks of ammonia, which is a scientific way of saying it smells like piss. Anthony Bourdain called this rotting piss shark, quote unquote, the single worst, most disgusting and terrible tasting thing I've ever tried. He also claimed that the next most disgusting things he tried were the warthog's rectum in Namibia and the McDonald's chicken nugget. And of course, we have to go back to East Asia and talk about shark fin soup. Like many commodities, this has caused untold damage. Shark fin soup is not some sort of special food source or protein source for any culture with few alternatives, but rather a status symbol. And with an ever-growing middle and upper class in China, this has become more destructive on a larger scale. Sharks are oftentimes fished, and they have their fins cut off. The rest of the shark's body is usually dumped into the ocean, where it dies an excruciating death. This is because it's really their fin, or their dorsal fin more specifically, that is profitable. The rest of their body, by and large, is considered cheap meat and is of low demand. To make matters worse, marine animals high on the food chain tend to have higher levels of toxins that accumulate from life forms on the food chain that are lower than them. And for this reason, shark fin soup not only poses a threat to sharks, but also humans. Namely, through the neurotoxins that contribute to Alzheimer's and other diseases like Parkinson's. There are also some species of shark in which they have all of their meat in, such as the aforementioned dogfish. However, it is worth noting that like many predatory marine animals, they all contain, well not all, but mostly contain high levels of mercury. Western nations don't have a perfect track record either when it comes to protecting sharks. Various Australian states have used drum lines and shark nets to trap and cull sharks. This has killed thousands of sharks that don't cause any harms to humans, alongside stingrays, dolphins, and other marine life. These shark nets and drum lines were initially used to ward off sharks from reaching beaches where humans visited, but untold destruction has been caused. And this is really disproportionate for the incredibly small number of people attacked by sharks. There have also been attempts to create drum lines which don't kill sharks and other marine species, or at the very least reduce the number of deaths. Nonetheless, humans, like sharks, are not pure evil. The US government banned shark finning in the year 2000, and various other nations like South Africa has placed numerous shark species under their environmental protection. Very specific island nations have set up shark sanctuaries. Humans have even brought sharks into their own urban spaces in aquariums, as controversial as it might be. Despite their massive size and appetites on occasion, sharks have been seen in public aquariums all over the world. Some of the most common sharks found in public aquariums are nurse sharks, zebra sharks, and small coastal sharks like the leopard shark. These can be found quite easily at your public aquarium if you live in a major city. A few people who have a lot of money and time can even have sharks in their private aquarium, but these are usually smaller sharks like cat sharks. There are even whale sharks in captivity, such as that in the Georgia Aquarium in Atlanta, where a few of them can call their 6 million gallon aquarium home. 
Unfortunately though, we have never been able to successfully keep a great white shark in captivity, which is a shame because that would sell a lot of tickets. Most great white sharks held in captivity pretty much die within a matter of weeks. And this brings up some complexities with conservation. Do we conserve animals by keeping them in captivity? Or do we let them roam where they are most likely to get killed? At the end of the day, the human shark relationship resembles that of one based off of some degree of projection, a bipedal ape who projected its worst impulses on a fish. And just as sharks are not a monolith, neither are humans. Nature managed to produce a creature that would wreak havoc on the natural world, but also be wise enough to be self-aware, to acknowledge and even protect it. As famed oceanographer Jacques Cousteau said, for most of history, man had to fight nature to survive. In this century, he's beginning to realize that in order to survive, he must protect nature.